everybody and welcome to another in my series of videos where I listen to classic albums for the first time and today's classic album is the only album by the Lars. The Lars, a Liverpudlian group formed in the late 80s. This was their only album. It took them three years to record this album. Hundreds of, well not hundreds, but lots of producers. I think it's something like 12 different producers worked trying to um, get the sounds that Lee Mavers, who was the lead singer and songwriter of the Lars, trying to get the sounds he heard in his head onto tape. It never happened. In the end, it was released and immediately disowned by the band. But that said, it has become a classic album. Enemy had it in its 500 greatest albums of all time. It's in the book, A Thousand and One Albums You Must Listen To Before You Die. Uh, Rolling Stone had it at number 13 in its list of 40 greatest one album wonders. It is a widely regarded classic album. Obviously I know where she goes. It was a huge song. It still is a huge song. I can't believe there's many people in the UK who don't know where she goes. Um, I, I don't think I know anything else from it. I might recognise when I hear them from the radio at the time because it was at the time when I would listen to Radio 1 religiously. Um, so this is a brand new copy, was sealed. Uh, I bought it, I think it was uh, Deal of a Day from recordstore.co.uk. It was certainly from them and it was certainly cheap. If, if it wasn't a Deal of a Day, it was in a, uh, a sale. Um, I think it cost me 9 99 Digitally remastered release on heavyweight vinyl featuring the singles There She Goes, Timeless Melody and Feeling, which as I say, don't mean anything to me. Uh, there's the back cover. Uh, it does come with a download code. Uh, there's the inner sleeve and the lyrics. And it's just on black vinyl. It's on Go Disc or Go Records or whatever they were called. Um, yes, but looking forward to giving this a listen. You know, it's, it's in my ballpark. It's just pre Brit pop. I mean, um, Ah, uh, his name's just gone completely out of my head. I mean, John Power went on to form Cast. You're a big Britpop group. Uh, also, Chris Sharrock, who was, in, who was a drummer in the group, went on to play with Robbie Williams and then um, BDI. So, so it's, you know, it's it, as I say, it's in my ballpark. So I'm looking forward to giving this a listen. I love Where She Goes. So if the rest of it lives up to that, it's going to be a great album. So let's give it a spin. See you in a bit. liked that a lot yeah really enjoyed that uh i'll go through track by track i've not written a lot about the tracks mainly because most of them are pretty short uh, the whole album is 35 minutes and 14 seconds long uh the longest track is the final track which is 7 minutes 51 but then the next longest track is timeless melody which is a second over three minutes and then everything else is under three minutes a couple of them are under two minutes so they're all short they come in they do their stuff and they get out which is a good i like long epic songs but not all songs need that and these songs didn't so they did them perfectly so it opens with son of a gun uh it's acoustic guitar led song quite simple quite catchy as is appropriate for most of the tracks on here um at this stage, I wasn't entirely sure about Lee's vocals. I'm just realising I'm getting echoes off my record player lid. Um, and it's pick it, probably picking up from me on my needle as well, so I'll shut that. Um, yeah, I wasn't entirely sure about Lee Maver's vocals at this point. However, they grew on me and by the end of the album they weren't an issue at all. His vocals did change quite a lot throughout the record as well. They started off quite gravelly, but that wasn't always the case. Not much to say about this song. But I liked it, um, and all of a sudden it ends. wasn't entirely convinced by that. Um, then it goes into I Can't Sleep, and we move into an electric song from the acoustic opener. Very 60s vibe with the vocals. Um, Reminded me a bit of Early Who. Sort of I Can't Explain, that sort of era. Again, not much to say about it, but really liked it. Uh, then Timeless Melody, which was a single. Didn't recognise it, but it's another catchy song. Very catchy rhythm guitar on this one. Uh, there's a guitar solo in the middle and it's got a very muddy effects driven sound which sounded good. Um, it's probably the song that was most like Cast, who of course John Power went on and formed. So if you, if you sort of like Cast, 
you'd like this song definitely i mean you'd like the whole album i'm sure uh track four was liberty ship just checking my writing um really love the start it had a sort of a rockabilly feel to it uh very infectious bass line very different vibe from the rest of the track so far although that said what i liked about this is that although you could tell it was the same band playing all the songs stylistically all of the songs were slightly different and they you know skipped around genres and it wasn't just you know the same song 12 times so that was good um but yeah like liberty ship and then we go into there she goes which is just a stone cold classic as i said at the start that guitar riff that opens it you know the do 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 that bit that just goes on throughout the song it's just really catchy and sticks in your brain and it's just a perfect song basically i can't fault it uh then side one ends with dole drum which is spelt dole as in on the dole uh for any americans watching the dole is what the um unemployment benefit was known as particularly in the 80s if you if you claimed unemployment benefit you said to be on the dole um so it's dole drum uh any late 50s early 60s rock and roll vibe to this reminded me quite a bit of certainly the rhythm um to the stones's version of all over now um good catchy vocals sections of it where there's some really nice harmonies good closer to the first side uh, side two opened with feeling which had um it's featured on quite a few of the tracks but it was very noticeable here the guitar i don't know if they were using a, a national guitar it's you know a steel type guitar to get the rhythm sound but it's a very tinny guitar sound which i liked um again it's just another simple catchy song there's guitar bits in it that reminded me a lot of day tripper the beatles track but yeah good start to the second side uh went into way out and the vibe it gave me was that it was a fast ballad it's it's sort of had a ballad feel to it but it was a bit faster than your typical that ballad um it's it was it was my speech impediment makes this word hard to say but it had a, a real 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 sound you know a scottish real you know as if you're whirling around the dance floor to it which i really liked i was sat here swaying away to it um yeah like that one a lot uh then it went to iou and it fades in um and it's just a simple three chord riff that drives the whole song again very simple but catchy nice guitar solo in it um, not the most lyrically complex song. I will say, going back to the subject of Lee's vocals, I, it was one that I would need to sit and read the lyrics whilst I'm listening to at some point, because it was, wasn't always easy to catch the vocals due to the production. Um, you know, you could hear he was singing, but you couldn't really catch the lyrics. Um, but yes, I you, good song. Uh, track 10 was Freedom Song, possibly after There She Goes, my next favourite song on the album. Uh, starts with a simple uh, Spanish guitar picked opening and then into a, a a ploddy rhythm and I don't mean ploddy as in you know it was dragging you down but just you know it was a slow um, yeah it's just a slow rhythm that sort of plodded along um, yeah it's, it's a lot slower song there are elements on here and obviously they came after and obviously it's a Liverpudlian thing but his vocals really reminded me of Tommy from Space in certain points here um the vocal rhythm suddenly struck me I was trying to think you know what's this reminding me of and it's it's the bit in reviewing the situation from Oliver uh where he, it goes down in this that bit um particularly in the instrumental version i've got a real russian vibe to it as well but yeah as i say probably my second favorite song on the album uh then we went into failure um what on earth does that say punky that's what i says um yeah it's sort of a, a punky sounding 60s riff to this almost um stooges-esque not much to say about the actual song it was a fine song it was a good song it was catchy simple bloody bloody blah, blah, blah wasn't a standout on the album and nothing wrong with it and then it ended on looking glass which as i said earlier is over seven minutes long 
um, lot slower song, sort of folky Irish sounding riff at the start, and then it's just acoustic guitar intro it, and that runs all the way through. Gave me a sort of Led Zepp Queen epic ballad vibe. Um, very long instrumental section in the middle, which sort of took you on a little musical journey, which was nice. Then vocals came back in. Um, at this stage, I could sort of see what an influence. Earlier on, you know, when I was trying to think what, you know, because the Lars are cited as an influence on quite a few bands, particularly the Britpop era and beyond, you know, and I could, I was getting vibes of certain bands here and there, but the one band who I remembered citing them as an influence was Oasis, and I wasn't really getting any Oasis anywhere. I did hear this was very much reminded me of one of Oasis's more cocaine-driven, wanky, overblown, sort of Be Here Now era songs. But this didn't have that overproduction, but sort of the style of the song very much reminded me of that. Um, at the end it speeds up and it gets faster and faster and faster and faster, and I would have liked it to just stop suddenly as much as the first track did, but it didn't. It, what it did instead is it collapsed into chaos, which... I was, ex but I think because I was expecting the sudden stop, it sort of, oh, to me. Um, but it's still a really good closer. But yeah, overall, love the album. Definitely will listen to it multiple times. Very much up my boulevard. Um, I was going to say it's a shame that they didn't do any more albums. They did a few bits. They sort of reformed after they split and fired around a bit, but Lee Mavers is, was too much of a control freak for anything to really happen. I was, as I, say, I was going to say it's a shame they didn't do more, but I think possibly if they did it would have ruined this. You know, this is pretty much a perfect album, so it could have sort of diluted their legacy if they did more. So maybe it's not a shame they didn't do more. But yeah, really good album, heartily recommend it, definitely a classic in my book. That's The Lars by The Lars. Okay, so this is a series where I listen to classic albums for the first time. I need your suggestions. Uh, I mean classic albums, albums that are on classic albums lists, not just your favourite album by your favourite artist or anything like that, unless that is on one of these lists. Um, don't worry about, you know, oh, I expect somebody's already suggested that, or I expect he's already heard that. Send me a suggestion if I've already heard it or if it's already been suggested. I'll just say thank you, but... Um, or thank you, it's already on my list. Or if it's not on there, I will always check to see if it is a classic album. What I tend to do is go to Wikipedia and normally there's a, a section where it mentions any such lists. And if it's if it qualifies, I'll say thank you very much, I'll add it to the list. And as and when I find it out and about, or in a sale or something like that, I'll pick it up. But yes, um, thank you for watching. Like, comment and subscribe and I'll see you in another video. Thanks, bye. <music>